Hey guys, Bobby, I'm back again for another video, and I'm going to try something different this time. I'm actually thinking about doing a beginner series um, because I feel like I've been getting pretty technical with my videos lately, and I realize a lot of the folks on YouTube are probably either non-brewers or wanting to get into the hobby for the first time. So I'd like to back up for a minute and do a few short videos on some beginner topics uh, and skills that you need to develop to be a good brewer. So today's episode is going to be on taking hydrometer readings or specific gravity readings to measure how much sugar you have in your work. Now I just filled up my hydrometer sample jar here. It's just a plastic tube with a base on it so it stands up right. And the most important thing to do is to measure the temperature of your sample. I just take note that uh, I'm going to just round it off at 68 degrees, okay? Now, there are a lot of different styles of hydrometers. They really all do, basically do the same thing. This one goes from about 11... 1170, you can see, all the way down to 990. Now that would be like a cider or a wine could possibly go under 1.00. So this is a wide range hydrometer. I could do from a barley wine all the way down to the final gravity of a cider or a wine. Now a quick tip I have for you is to figure out where the wort needs to end up on your jar or your test tube in order for not only to get the wort up to a nice readable area at the top of the test tube but also so that you don't overflow the tube okay so the way to do that is to fill it up with the hydrometer in inside and get it to near the top and now remove the hydrometer and then put a sharpie line right on your jar at that wort level. That way you know exactly how high to fill it up every time. So drop your uh, hydrometer into the sample and give it a quick spin to dislodge any bubbles that might be at the bottom which will skew your reading. And now you're just going to let it settle and look directly at the surface of that work. Now it's hard to read what's underneath the work, so take a look at the scale above it and you'll see I have 1030, 1040, and then right, at, right down at the surface is the 1050. Can you see that? Now if you rotate the hydrometer glass a little bit, you'll see that there are smaller increments. Those are usually in um, 0 0.002 increments. So if it was floating one line above the 1050, we'd have 1052, somewhere about there. Okay, but in this particular case, I'm measuring exactly 1050 or 1.050. Our sample was 68 degrees and my hydrometer calibration temperature is 60 so we have to use a utility or do some math to figure out what the actual reading is. I use Beard Tools Pro and there's a little uh, utility in the calculators that allows you to do this and I'll show you the, the uh, entries here. The hydrometer calibration temperature is set to 60, sample temperature 68, the hydrometer reading was 1050 and it's going to give me a corrected gravity of 1051. Now, you can notice that the difference isn't really that great, only because the calibration temp and the actual temp is pretty close. It's only variable by 8 degrees. While these utilities are pretty accurate, I would recommend getting your sample down as close to your calibration temperature as possible, because the margin for error increases as the uh, the delta between the temperatures uh, go up. So don't take a sample of boiling wort 
and drop your hydrometer in there and expect this conversion to be accurate. It will be off by several points.